Stanley, Nicole, I'm Ryan. Uh, we have a very, very special event today, a celebrity session. Look at our guest. He released an album today. Say hi to Sean Mendez. Hey! hey What's going on? Good to hey, see you again. Stanley, you have the Matthew McConaughey book in the background. You noticed that, yeah. right? Yeah. It's I, I really good. We were talking to him a couple of weeks ago. I suggested everyone go out and get it. That's why oh, I yeah. it. It's really there. amazing. I finished it last a couple of weeks ago. It's amazing. Yeah, right? So Green I don't know if you know, right, do you know right, the right. inside? All right, all right, all right. I don't know if you know the inside scoop, but he did share with us that his kids were very impressed that um, he had your number. And he was like, well, let's call him right now. And they're like, no, no, we don't know what we're going to say. And they like sort of freaked out. And he was like, eventually we'll, we'll, we'll get there. There, but um, um, is he somebody that you look up to? Is he somebody that yeah, you're enjoying you can't getting tell. to I'm know? Basically, tr basically trying everything in my power to look like him, sound like him, and act like him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, a good reader? Do you go through a lot of books? Uh, I wasn't f forever, and then this year I've read I'm, I've read more books this year than I have in the last ten years. <laughs> mm. So now let me ask uh, you something. When you when you go through books, do you get the actual hard copy of the book, or do you Kindle it? Or um, I get the hard copy, it? and I do audiobooks, depending on you know how patient I am or not uh, for Amazon. But it's it's one or the other. But I I loved reading that book, physical copy actually of him. Yeah, um, yeah but he's I mean amazing. I I reached out to him randomly and i had no idea if he would come get back because i was just like i just need to call you and ask you how to do life <laughs> this is before the book even came out it was just um and uh yeah he we had a long call on facetime and, and he just he's been so gracious with his words and all right, all right. Now here I am. It, it's <laughs> funny that you say that because he does. Like you said that perfectly. Like he does know how to do life. We got a chance to chat with him just a little bit ago, and he had so many beautiful things to say about you. He feels like you're just like a stand-up guy. Like you're doing everything in life right, and and he really, really, uh, he thinks you're just something special. So it was it was really cool, and I hope that you guys just keep growing your friendship. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's crazy because like I think it's amazing to read. A book like his and I don't know if we talked about this last time, but like just the, the messiness of of life is like how I mean, the way he puts his childhood that was in his words, crazy and messy is like he was honored to grow up that way. I know he's, I he probably told you guys that, but it just makes me think about like my childhood and everything messy and everything weird and uncomfortable that I that I went through maybe and how I'm honored for those things to like make me the person I am today. I just think it's a beautiful way to look at life and um, if you can, you know, so. I agree. You, know, you seem to find in life the messy stuff makes you stronger. That's where, that's where you grow. That's where all that, that weird growth is. <laughs> you know, it was funny because obviously um, we've all watched the documentary. It was epic, by the way. If you have not seen Sean Mendes' documentary, it is it is so beautifully it's done. Great. And I, I feel like I got to know you so much and I feel like you were so vulnerable, which I appreciate. So thank you. But yeah, it was fun looking back into your childhood and, and, and the connection that you still have with home. Like it feels like you haven't lost yourself. It feels like that is so still much a part of you, your friends, you know, your actual house, your, your town. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's such a cool thing. And I feel like you like yearn for it when you're on the road. Dave Chappelle, um, I was watching his, uh, he, he did, he just released a thing on Netflix. Uh, oh, with David Letterman. And he talks about how important it is to make your little corner of the world all beautiful and, and, and warm. And he talks about his community and how it's like his sanctuary. And I never really thought about it that way, but it, it was so, it was so true. Like you don't have to make the entire, you don't have to change the entire world. You just got to change your little corner and work from there. And it was a, a beautiful way of putting it, but it really, um, watching the documentary back reminded me like, Oh yeah, I gotta, this is, this is important. These people from home and, and just that area like that, that's my, that's where I grew up. That's my, my roots right there. Right now, Absolutely. speaking of people that are important, we have a lot of listeners actually from all over the country, and uh, they have a few questions for you, Sean. You know they love you as all we right. celebrate Wonder's uh, release today. Uh, we got Caitlin in Connecticut. Hi, Caitlin. What's your question for Sean? Hi, Caitlin. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Um, so your good. concert was absolutely amazing, by the way, last year. I loved it so much. You look like you just um, came from it. <laughs> <laughs> My question to you is, what was your favorite quarantine snack? 
My favorite quarantine snack. I don't know if you know, but there's this chocolate. It's like it's. It's. I guess it's like a bougie, healthy chocolate, but it's called Hue Chocolate, and it's I like love Hue Chocolate. Oh, yeah. So you know, and you you eat it like a like a demon, don't you? I know. I do it too. Yeah, it's like an animal. <laughs> so I, I can eat like. It's like the serving size is half the bar, and you never read something that's chocolate, and you're and they're like eat half the bar, and you're like it's serving size half the bar, so two serving sizes is the entire bar. This is a great life. Um, anyway, yeah, you chocolate. <laughs> While you were in quarantine, did you get to cook a lot? Did Camila cook for you? Did you cook um, for her? Do you guys yeah, cook her in? we we cooked we cooked a lot actually. Um, I, I I'm I'm a, I'm thinking I'm an okay cook. She's got that natural like just put a little of this and then put a little of that and make the butter make put a little bit more butter and salt and it ends up tasting so much better because I'm always trying to make like this cr- crazy healthy version that tastes like air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one reason we're all here today and, and very excited about is you're going to perform, uh, and this is something we we just can't wait to hear. But you're gonna you're gonna start off with intro, and I guess uh, is before we go, is there anything you want to say about the song? And then you're going to do Wonder Two. Is there anything you want to say? I mean, this is like there's been no live shows, and this is live top to bottom, and it's and I'm and there's like real nerves. It was it's a really weird feeling actually. Um, but intro. Intro really is exactly what the name is. It's it's the introduction to the person I feel like I've become over the last year and lyrically and musically and kind of opens the doors for what wonder is the essence of. Sean Mendez, that is oh, absolutely oh amazing. Man. It is, it is so good to hear you play. Uh, it's the mashup on Sirius XM Hits One. We're doing a celebrity session with Sean Mendez. Um, and, you know, we just heard Wonder. So we have a lot of uh, listeners here today that are asking questions or want to know things from you. And we have one actually about Wonder. So Bella is from New Jersey. Uh, she's nice enough to be joining here, us here today. So we're going to get Bella up on the screen and we're going to let her go ahead and uh, and ask her question. Hello, Bella. What's How up, are Bella? you? Bella? Hey. Hey, Bella. Bella's got the, the fairy lights in the background. <laughs> like hey, how's it going, sweetheart? Good, how are you? I'm good. I just want to say real quick, I got to meet you in 2014, and I really? didn't get to tell you that I loved you. Oh. And it ate me up for years. So for uh, two- literally years. Yeah. That's a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> I just want to say I love you so much, and I'm so proud of you and the person you become. Oh, so. you're so sweet. Thank you. I, I love you, too. <laughs> um, so my question is, Wonder seems to be more vulnerable. So I was wondering what sparked that shift. Um, I think it's just the constant growth and realization that the most amazing art, in my opinion, comes from truth and vulnerability. And the music that I listen to and love to connect with is authentic and vulnerable. So therefore, I kind of started to go that way. Um but yeah, I mean, it, it. I think as my albums go on and on and on, I get more comfortable with who I am and also letting everybody else into that world of who I am. And that's kind of what's happening at the moment. Yeah, Do you I've, push yourself to be vulnerable or is it something you're very comfortable with and it's sort of like therapy for you and you want to do it? I think, I, I think a little bit of both. I think there's something cathartic about... Uh, talking you're speaking your truth at all times um although it takes a lot of courage and sometimes you say things that you regret saying and you feel like oh i may i don't want to say that but then you just kind of have to be there for yourself and have your own back when you when you when you say those things because otherwise you're just putting on a face and and trying to be someone you're not at all times and that's just like that's not a fun way to live i don't think it's you know, we got to see like a, a lot of your vulnerability again in the documentary. Um, you know, you talked about, or at least to me, seemed like there was a lot of moments of loneliness, which I feel like probably mm-hmm. a lot of artists feel um, stress, anxiety. How do you sh- like decompress or shut everything out when you are on tour or you are feeling all of those overwhelming emotions? It's really hard. I think um, the trick is to try not to take myself too seriously and remember that this isn't sometimes it feels like you're in a movie when you're a musician and you're like from plane to car and and fans outside and there's paparazzi and there's lights in the camera and then you're on stage and you walk off stage straight into a car to a hotel room it's like you're in a, a movie and you can get overwhelmed by this whole thing of the world's revolving around me um but then you remind yourself that it's not and it's actually okay and it's difficult it's definitely difficult i mean i would say after like a couple months of touring it, it starts to kind of eat up at you but that's when i start to pull the the facetimes in every few hours to my friends from home and, and my parents from home and stuff 
you know, when I watched the documentary, one thing that stuck out to me, one of your early concerts, it was in, uh, for, for lack of a better term, a, a high school auditorium or a mm. college auditorium. It looked like where you would have taken your freshman math class. Yeah. And, <laughs> like it was fully lit up. You could see everybody. When you walk into a venue, does the vibe of a room change the way you play it or like do you walk into a venue and go oh this place doesn't feel right or this place feels yeah, really good totally i'm absolutely so i mean I, i'm i'm so sensitive to like the shape of the arena sometimes like where like if it's like a high ceilings i'm always like more excited and if it's like really close i feel like but what i try to do at that point is just is get over that a little bit because the truth is is that i've i've walked into an arena and been like this is not a good day this is not going to be good and got off stage and it's been one of the best shows of my life Life. So I really have no control over that, you know. You know, when I saw you on stage, you know, well, we've, we've been to one of your shows before, but watching you again in the documentary, it's like, it's really intense. I mean, you are jumping, you are uh, moving around a lot. Like, you leave, I feel like, every show fully sweating. Soaked, have yeah. You, I, I, soaked. I mean, it's like a full body workout. Um, have you ever hurt yourself? Like, have you ever actually injured yourself while you were performing on stage? Well, I, I had, this is like really old man of me, but I, I had these boots and I got superstitious about the boots and the boots, I completely wore the soul out of. So it was just like standing on wood, but I would, I had to wear them every day. So, and then there's a point and I, I really stomp super hard on my on my right foot like every show and i started getting this crazy like sciatica up my leg <laughs> during, <laughs> during the, the whole tour and it was just like i felt like every morning i was like getting out of bed at 73 years old and like trying to massage my sciatica <laughs> <laughs> that is real old man of you sorry i know i, I know it is <laughs> oh. all right we got another listener question here uh, okay i believe this is from giovanna in new york giovanna there she is How are you? Hi. Um, hey. My, my name is Giovanna. This is my sister Gabrielle. This, like, this is my mom. This is my mom Jennifer. Um, congratulations on the album, by the way. We really love it. Thank you guys so much. It looks amazing. You look like you're in a, the movie Elf. <laughs> yeah. um, my question is: You're a role model to so many, including myself. And do you feel like that brings a lot of uh, pressure on yourself? I think that no matter what everyone puts a lot of pressure on themselves and a few years ago i decided that if if i am a role model to people that the best way i'm going to do that is just to be honest at all times because i really think like the way you learn from people and my mentors and people who i really love and look up to in my life aren't perfect and they actually are the opposite they're they're messy and they're they're honest about it and they explain what they're going through and i think that's what i try and do the best um but yeah i mean a little bit of pressure sometimes, but I just try and be human and move on, you know? You know, Thanks, Monster guys. Monster is obviously, you know, that your song with Justin Bieber and is a, a lot about, you know, putting your, you feel like you're put on a pedestal. Like you feel like the world puts you on this pedestal and it's got to be very hard to live up to. Uh, how do you shut that off or handle it? It's like, you know, sometimes we get like nasty, you know, DMs or nasty mm. comments in our Instagram. Like I have a lot of trouble turning that off and, 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 mm -hmm. you know, it, just letting that go. When you, that feel that, that pressure becomes too much, uh, what do you do? How do you handle it? Hmm. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's hard. It feels like social media and the judgment of others has us by its grip. You know, it's so powerful over us. And I feel like even for, for me, which is like, I, I'm really, I'm really disciplined. I'll be able to like turn my phone off Instagram for a week. But the second I like see anything where I could maybe f see what one person said about me, I, I'm like addicted to it. Yeah. Um, but I really set boundaries for myself. Like I, I really don't let myself go on social media for longer than like five, 10 minutes at a, at a, at max, you know? And if you don't set those boundaries, you just end up in a world spiraling of like what someone said about your picture that you posted three years ago, 55 comments in. And you're like, this is ridiculous. It's just not real life, you know, come back to yeah. the present moment. But boundaries, yeah. With Celebrity Session right now with Sean Mendez. Uh, it is time for you to perform again. It is a celebrity session on Sirius XM Hits One. Uh, I'm Ryan with Stan and Nicole. We're the morning mashup. And today, Wonder is out and Sean Mendez uh, is here to talk about it and here with us. Hey, man, it's What's so up? good to see you. And this has been a lot of fun. The performances are just crazy. Amazing. I, just I amazing. Thank you. This album is like absolutely 
created for live performance. It's created to be played on stage. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is really amazing. I can't wait until we're on stage live in front of people. I think it'll be so euphoric. How is um, sure. how's Tarzan? How's Tarzan? He's good. He's he's growing at the most insane. Like I was able to pick him up and like cradle him like a baby like last week. And this week he's like so big in my arms. And I'm like, I got, I got 10 minutes max with you in my arms right now. And it's weird. He's he's growing up, and but he's becoming really nice. Before he was kind of like a puppy who didn't listen. And now he's kind of like my, my bro. And he comes and has coffee with me in the morning. <laughs> Does he Does sleep he with you at night? Valuable? He doesn't. He doesn't. He, he destroys. He doesn't destroy much. He The only thing that he sometimes wants to destroy are all my cables while I'm trying to make music, which oh. would actually be horrible. <laughs> well, the, 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 your fourth studio album, Wonder, is available everywhere. Download it. It's fantastic. It opens up a, a very sensitive side to you. I, I, I can hear you grow as an artist, not only in your lyrics, but in your, the musical orchestration. Uh, here's what I wonder, Sean. We, we've known each other for a few years now. I mean, we've been with you since, uh, you know, as soon as you came out. You were pretty, uh, pretty young when you came out. Still pretty young. I wonder what it's like to be loved by Camilla. What is it like <laughs> to be loved by Camilla? It's it's like it's like the most she is completely all in or nothing and I think that's something that I wasn't at the beginning of our relationship and and I think that a lot of people maybe are afraid to be all in because if you're all in then you kind of it hurts it, the blow hurts that much more if it ends, you know. Um but she really teaches me that if we have one life and we don't have much time here, might as well be all in if you're in love with someone and you're there. And I kind of learn that every day. She's so absolutely patient with me, especially when I'm stressed or anything is kind of getting to me. She 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 texts me and if I if I ever am kind of just being bitey with her and she'll be like, it's okay, I love you no matter what, I love you no matter what. And it's like that that's real strength and patience and love. Um, but it's amazing. It's like a movie. Oh, I wish you could teach me to be like that with my husband. I'm still working on that. Um, do you remember, like, the moment? Because obviously you guys were friends and had worked together for years. You know, there was a long time before this became a relationship. Do you remember the moment or the night or the day or the second when it went from being friends to, okay, we want to we wanna try to do this? I absolutely do. I remember, and I was in... I think I think I was just bugging her a long t for a long time about how I felt about her and I think I was I was I do I don't remember I think I was in Calgary or Edmonton, Canada and I was at dinner with two of my friends and I and I read she texted me fine, being like basically being like okay fine I like you Okay, fine. This is a thing. And I, <laughs> okay, I just, fine. I have the text. I have this, I screenshotted the text message. I was like, finally, she caved. It was so great. <laughs> well, you were obviously way ahead of her. When was the moment you realized it? Oh, I'm, I'm like, uh, like, if, I think before my last album, I was, I was, um, thinking about her all the time, which was so frustrating because I was like, I got to stop writing songs about this person. I have to, and I was writing with like Scott Harris and we we're like, and he's like, you still want to write songs about her, don't you? I'm like, I'm, I don't want to write songs about her, but it's all I got. <laughs> you know, there was a moment in, there was a moment in the documentary where you actually run inside and hide a photo frame that was on the piano. Mm. And I just need to know why were you so determined to hide that from the cameras? And uh, do you have any desire to share what that? I honestly that photo have no was? idea why it was. A, it was the, you know what it was is we posted a video of us like making out a really aggressively, that went super viral and people were like it was super. I, people were like offended by it, and was I was like best. it was the it was the best and the worst because I was getting so many mixed messages, and <laughs> my nan. I guess I don't know if it was a joke, but my. My nan in England, I don't know if she was sent it as a joke or on purpose, but she sent me a happy new year's with the photo of that from that video of us kissing. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> if they come in and they're like scanning the photos on my piano and this is like a really like controversial thing, <laughs> like I don't want it to be a big deal. Honestly, if that happened today, I would have taken the photo and put it in front of the camera because I think it's so funny and so ridiculous. But I was a little nervous back then, I think. Okay. Is there one thing that you wish they had caught in the documentary that they didn't get on camera? Oh my God, no! I mean, they caught mostly everything. 
yeah. they could have maybe paddled a little less. I mean, everything. <laughs> yeah. like fully, they really did not mess around. No. Uh, we got some more people here that uh, want to get some questions in. Who's, uh, who's next, Nicole? I think we've I got uh, Marissa in Maryland. Hello, Marissa. Hey, Marissa. Hi, Hi Marissa. Um, I just want to say I love your album so much. It is just absolutely amazing, and I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my question is, what was your family's reaction to the Netflix documentary? They were in shock, actually. My mom cried her eyes out. I think it was it was weird for my parents to see so much footage where they weren't around, you know, because I was on tour kind of across the world and they were communicating with me through through phone, but like they didn't see. Um, so my mom really cried her eyes out. And I think my sister shed a couple of tears, but like the second I turned around, she was like, what? what? I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, they were they they really loved it. They were a yeah. shock because I don't think they were expecting that type of a documentary. Yeah. You know, it was it was really sweet to see you home with your family. And, you know, when you said I haven't seen my family like a ton this year, like that just like got me. Like, I don't know if I'd be able to be away from my family for that long. Yeah. Is there something specific that you miss? I mean, besides just like your home and 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 being with your family members, like does your mom make a dish that you're like, oh, I just miss mom. My mom whatever. is like the most amazing I'll make you comfy vibe of all time. Like no matter, like she's so good at making whoever's there so comfortable, whether like anytime you walk into my house, there's candles lit everywhere and it smells like some sort of home cooked food. And there's like Christmas music playing maybe even in the summertime. And it's like always a really <laughs> comfortable, cozy vibe. And I, and I do miss that, that kind of mother's comfort. But uh, I mean, like I'm going back home in, in four days and uh, I'm, I'm dying. Cause I haven't really been there for, for months now. So. Yay. Awesome. Well, we got one more performance. Uh, here we go. Sean Mendez. It's a dream a celebrity session on Sirius XM hits one. It's the mashup on Sirius XM Hits One, a celebrity session with Sean Mendez. We are I, thank you so much for doing this today, um, and thank you to everybody who's who's on our Zoom today and the audience. You guys have been a, an amazing audience. Um, we want to get one more question in because I know Sean, you've got a you got a busy day today because well, your album came out. You've got yeah, some things to yeah, do. Yeah, that um, yeah, right. <laughs> we got uh, Emily uh, in California. Emily, uh, what's your question? You're on with Sean. Hey. Hi, I just wanted to say I went from watching you open stadiums for Taylor Swift to now opening your own shows at stadiums. And it's just incredible. I'm so proud of you. Um, but my question is, um, if you could choose one lyric to sum up the album, what would it be? Thank you so much, by the way. That's so kind of you. Um, one lyric to sum up the album? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't think any lyric could sum up the album because everything is so individually unique. But um, my some of my favorite lyrics are in the song "Dream." Um, I think I think if people listen to that, it's super abstract. I think I was aiming for like a more of a John Lennon e type lyric, but uh, I really love that. Well, Sean, thank you so much for doing this today. Um, good luck with everything, and and it's so nice to uh, to see you. And we hope we get to see you soon. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Yes. Happy holidays. And we love Wonder. You killed it. We're so Thank proud you. of you. You are just a genius. Thank you so much for, for giving it to the world. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.